Good readings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of our rant series. Yes, we haven't done one of these in a while. I know I get people asking all the time, Pete, we want to see more rants. We want more rants. We want you to get excited and angry about stuff. Well, I do these when the need arises, when something happens out there in the music world that really just boggles my mind. And I feel that I need to kind of expand on that and let off some steam. So we did a little bit of this last night. Actually, Chris Allo did most of it last night at the tail end of the Hudson Valley Squares episode. So if you have not seen that, uh, Chris was at his best talking about this very subject. But I want to kind of expand on it a little bit, uh, seeing it as it's now you know 12 hours later and there's some additional stuff going on. So for those of you who hadn't heard... Judas Priest made the announcement. All right, uh, let me see if I, I, I have like uh, earlier. This is yesterday. Earlier today, the British heavy metal legends released a statement in which they said that they were planning to return to the road as an even more powerful, relentless four piece heavy metal band. They also thanked Andy Sneet for all he has done and contributing and continuing to be in the production team for the group's next studio album. But basically, his services out on the road are no longer needed. So Richie Faulkner, the guy who just had this major heart problem late last year, right, has now, you know, had the operation, he's gone through the recovery, he's ready to get back out on the road and do it all. No other guitar player needed. When this is a band that forever and ever has been known as a two-guitar band with dueling leads, even one guy soloing, got the other guy hitting the crushing riffs underneath it. That's the Judas Priest sound, right? So now Richie's going to do it all. Are there going to be backing rhythm guitar tracks? This kind of goes ev against everything that Judas Priest is all about. Let me continue. Uh, Andy says, uh, Rob called me last Monday and said they wanted to move on as a four-piece, which I find incredibly disappointing after this amount of time, but I respect his decision as they obviously have a vision how they want this to play out. Andy also says this, was this always was a temporary situation. Like I've said before, I'll always help the band any way I can, and that applies going forward also, he continued. I've been a huge fan of the band since the early 80s, and it was mind-blowing to play on stage with the guys and, quite frankly, terrifying in the beginning at such short notice. We are moving forward with a new album next month and look forward to making a killer follow-up to Firepower. All right? So, <clears throat> I mean, think about it. This is a band that... God, if you're watching this, obviously you're a Judas Priest fan. We've been following them for decades after decades after decades. Uh, always a two-guitar band. Originally, you know, you had the classic lineup with Tipton and Downing. Glenn, obviously, you know, has Parkinson's. KK retired from the band a number of years ago. There's obviously some bad blood going on there because I think KK would have loved to have come back to the band, but obviously they have derailed that at every moment. Uh... Glenn played alongside Richie Faulkner for a while. Glenn obviously can't tour anymore, so they brought in Andy Sneap, who was working with them as producer, uh, and he's also a very good guitar player. So he basically has been filling the second guitar slot for the last couple tours, doing it quite well, I might add. Although, you know, if you've seen any of the shows, most of the solos have been done by Richie, with Glenn holding down all the rhythms, although Andy does do a couple here and there. Uh, but obviously they felt that they no longer needed that and wanted to go out as a four-piece. I don't really understand the mentality of this decision. I really don't get it. This is a fucking two-guitar band, always has been. No disrespect to Richie Faulkner. He is a great guitarist. But you can't ask the guy to do it all in this instance with this band. All right, so... Just this morning, in fact, an hour ago, on Judas Priest's Facebook page, they posted, Hello, Maniacs. We are chomping at the British Steel bit to return to world touring, celebrating 50 years of Judas Priest as an even more powerful, relentless, four-piece heavy metal band, with Glenn coming out on stage with us here and there as before. Big thanks to Andy for all you've done and continuing to be in the production team for our new album. See you all soon, Headbangers. So let's... Take a look at that. So this is 50 years. 50 years of Judas Priest. Granted, it's coming a little bit late because of COVID, but 50 years celebrating this monstrous, instrumental, legendary, influential heavy metal machine. You think you want to do it right. So, so we're gonna we're gonna come back out, celebrate 50 years, but we're only gonna bring one guitar player on the road. Now, 
I understand if you don't want to invite KK back. Like I said, there's obviously some bad blood going on there. If you read KK's book, eh, he kind of shits on his relationship with Glenn. Says some things that maybe he shouldn't have. And, and they're probably like, you know what? He also, it, I'm sure there were money issues, management issues behind the scenes, right? He also just kind of left the band. It's like, ah, I'm done. I'm retiring. I don't need this anymore. So there, there's, there's, some, there's some bad blood there, obviously. They don't want to deal with that. So he's doing his own KK's Priest thing, you know, whatever. That's fine. Uh... I get maybe you don't want to bring Andy out on the road for whatever reasons, but you have to keep up the in, the integrity of what this band is all about. It just you have it's the configuration that you have to have. This is fifty years of having a band this way. This is like if if Iron Maiden decided, you know what, <clears throat> we're gonna let Adrian and uh, Dave go. And we're just going to keep Yannick and we're going to go out that way. This would be like Thin Lizzy going out, you know, back in the day I'm talking about, going out with just one guitar player, right? you, you got to have you got to have the two guys when you're out on the road. And this is no different. <clears throat> it, this would be like, you know, yes, going out on tour without a keyboard player. You can't do it. You can't do it. So after that post went live earlier this morning on Facebook, we now have... Almost 800 comments from fans. Almost every single one of them. I haven't read all 800. I've read like 300 of them. Every, Just about every single one of them is in agreement that they are extremely disappointed. What are you guys thinking? You have to wonder, if you're the band thinking, ah, oh, we made this great decision, we're going to be tighter, it's going to be great, four-piece, woo, 50 years, we can't wait to get back on the road, we're going to show you how we're going to do it now, and every single fan's response is, fuck no, that's not what we want to see. I, I see people saying that I'm going to get my money back, I'm not going to see this show. I've had tickets to this show, for the New Jersey show, for ages, right, because they postponed it and Richie got sick right so I'm like man I was really looking forward to this Queen's Rex opening up cool you know great double bill and I'm like hmm how are they going to do this this is a band historically have always shit on other bands who use backing tracks and pre-recorded stuff out there on stage so how are they going to work this right it's a lot of guitar solos in Jews Priest songs there's a lot of riffs behind those guitar solos how's this going to sound you're going to go out there to pre-recorded rhythm guitar tracks? That basically, then you guys are hypocrites, right? I mean, this just doesn't make any sense at all. Do they not want to pay another guy to be out there playing guitar with them? I mean, come on. You can hire anybody. You can hire anybody. As Chris Allo said last night on Hudson Valley Square, shit, you, there's, you know all the Jewish Priest cover bands that are out there? You can get any guy, any guy from any of those bands and pay him next to nothing. Night after night. And I'm sure he'd be stoked to go out there <clears throat> playing with the band just to just to say I did it, right? This doesn't make any sense. And if you feel that, you know, Andy maybe a great producer, you love having him, he did a great job filling in, but maybe isn't really that guy that we want out there night after night, and maybe that's the case. Well, there are a lot of other capable guys out there who I'm sure would love this gig, who are name guys. You can't tell me someone like a George Lynch or a Gus G or a Chris Caffrey or something. I mean, wouldn't jump at the chance of this opportunity to go play with Judas Priest alongside Richie Faulkner on stage at forming a great dual guitar team. I mean, come on. This is like a no-brainer. I it's just it just defies logic. Defies logic. I mean, I'm just sitting here going through some of these dumbest move. You need two guitars. Extremely disappointed as a lifelong fan. Uh, you should have. Your if this is what you're going to decide, your farewell tour that was ten years ago, you should have stayed a farewell tour then. I'm sorry, but Judas Priest without dual guitars is not something I'm very excited to see. This is how you celebrate fifty years. Sorry, guys. Priest is a twin guitar band. What's next? Replacing Rob Halford with Elton John? I mean, it's just this is what I'm seeing here. Fifty year anniversary with only one guitar doesn't make sense. Priest is twin guitar attack. Call Wolf Hoffman up. I'm sure he'll take uh, take part in this. This is indescribably embarrassing. What has happened to the revolutionary and metal creating Judas Priest? The only maniac is the person who somehow thinks this is a good idea. Had it been April, I'd have said Great April Fools. Exactly. 
Exactly. Uh, you know, it's funny how everybody that I talk to in just a short period of time and everything I'm reading, everybody is on the same page. Guys, if you have any integrity left, listen to your thousands and thousands of fans who are up in arms over this decision. It's not that hard. Do what you guys do best. All right. Get ready to go out on the road. Get yourself a second guitar player. Whoever it might be, it doesn't have to be a name guy. It's the only way to do this. Because otherwise, you are sacrificing everything that you guys have stood for for all these years. It's like, we love you. We want to see you. But do it the right way. This is 50 years. This is a big deal. Do it the right way. Don't change the makeup of the band now just because whatever the reason might be. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Do it the right way. You have to wonder. you got to know they're reading all these comments and they're hearing all these comments. You know. But now what do you do? Oh, well, due to the uh, outpouring of uh, hatred and, you know, pissed offedness from our fan base, we're going to rethink this whole thing. Because now it looks silly if they kind of go back on it, right? So it's almost like, you know, did you give this a lot of thought? I, I, I wish I could, could be a fly on the wall into the discussions of why they decided to do this. It's like, yeah, we know we've always been a two-guitar band, but you know what? We think we can do this. We could be tighter. We can sound tighter. We could be heavier with just one guitarist. But you have all these songs that are built, that are not built for that, right? A, a whole catalog that's not built for what they're now saying they want to do. I don't get it. Count me as another really disappointed and upset fan. And I, quite frankly, I'm like... How the hell is this going to work? You know, I, my show is, I think, March 30th. Uh, so it's coming up. It's a little over two months away. Uh, you know, a lot can happen between now and then. But you, I got to admit, I'm like kind of like, hmm, is this something I really want to be a part of? I don't know. Because now you got to wonder, you know, what's the set list going to look like? They've done a great job over the last couple of years. I've seen them, you know, three, four times over the last three, four years. And they've done a really good job of throwing in a lot of, like, old, rare tunes and things I don't normally play. You know, now what are you going to do? All right? You're going to go out there and play a set of the same old, same old? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So leave me as quite disappointed and befuddled. And uh, part of me is, is it's a little angry that the band at this stage of the game with such a big, huge 50th anniversary tour coming up and a new album coming out, you know, sometime later this year. Uh, you know, what the fuck, guys? Come on. It's not that difficult. So rant over. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Let us know what you think in the comments below. How do you feel about this move, right? If you're angry, let's hear it. Right? If you're confused, let's hear it. If you're befuddled, let's hear it. If you have a solution for them, let's hear it. Put it down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm P. Pardo. See you real soon. And Priest, get your act together, guys. Come on. Bye-bye.